All right, welcome back. It's Sully here, and we are going to be talking today about logarithmic function manipulation. I, you know, manipulation, I think of like puppet master, right? So like, ideally, by the end of this, you're going to be really good at using logarithmic functions and moving them around and manipulating the way you need to use them. All right. All right, here we go. So we got a bunch of properties here. Okay, not a bunch. We got really four properties today that we're going to talk about. And they make sense, right? So first one is called the product property. And what it says is this. If I'm taking a log, whatever the base, of two things inside there that are multiplied, I can expand this out and do the log of the first one plus the log of the second one. So for example, if I had the log of 4x, we could rewrite that as the log of 4 plus the log of x, right? This makes sense. It should make sense because multiplication and addition have a relationship, right? Repeated addition is, in fact, multiplication. It should make sense that addition and multiplication go together. So that would be expanding it. We're making it somewhat bigger. We could also go the other way. Perhaps we have this. We have a natural log of 6 plus the natural log of y. We could condense these. We have the same base, natural log, and then we would say the natural log of the product of these two things, 6y, because we're multiplying those together. All right. The quotient property, very similar to that, just a little bit different because it's a quotient. We're dividing. Instead of adding, we're just going to be subtracting. So again, same thing applies. If I have log base 2 of x over 10, I can rewrite that as the log base 2, I have to keep the base of x, minus the log base 2 of 10. All right? That would be expanding it. If I wanted to condense it, maybe I'd have this, log base 4 of uh, 3y, minus the log base 4 of z. I can combine these two things. That'd be the log base 4. I keep the base. Has to be the same. If this was log base 4 and this was log base 8, we could not do this property. All right. So now I'm going to combine them with the quotient. So that's 3y over z. It's good to get in the habit of putting parentheses around things we're taking logs of. So we're going to do that. All right. Last but certainly not least, the power property. So essentially, if I have something and it's raised to a power, what happens is it goes out front and it multiplies it. So for example, if I had log base uh, 3 of x squared, that 2 goes in the front. Now it's 2 times the log base 3 of x. All right. And as we go through these, you're going to be like, well, why would I ever do that? Well, you know, it's going to help you solve things later on. And you'll see today how it can help us understand the graphs of these things a little bit better as well. So we could also have the natural log of, um, oh, excuse me, we could say 10 times the natural log of um, yz, and that would be equal to the natural log of y and z, both of those to the 10th power. All right? So let's try this. First of all, I think it's good when I'm expanding these out to get as many things as I can. So the first thing is I notice I'm multiplying. I'm multiplying three things here. So I'm going to have three things down here. So I have log of 4. Multiplying means I add log of x squared. Multiplying means I add and log of y. Now I need to go back and look. I got nothing else here. But here I have a power. So I could change that. So that's log of 4. This power goes to the front. That's my power rule. So that's 2 log of x plus log of y. Very good. Let's go down here. All right, I have two things. I'm dividing, so I'm going to separate those two things by division. So I have log, I'm going to rewrite this, x plus 5 to the 1 third power. Remember when I take a cube root, it's 1 third minus, because I'm dividing, log of y squared. So now I have powers here. The power goes in the front. 
I have a power here that goes in the front as well and we have expanded it as much as we really would like to. I could have put this as log of x plus 5 over 3. That's the same thing, right? You're going to see that sometimes. So you need to understand that when I see log of x plus 5 over 3, that's the same thing as 1 third log of x plus 5. Those are things that you should understand in terms of um, your mathematical knowledge at this point. All right, so let's uh, condense. So expand, I make them as many, uh, as far out as I can. I use as many properties as I can. Condensing, I want to get one single logarithm down. So down here, the first thing I did, I did the powers last. This is backwards, so I'm going to do the powers first. So I have a 2 times that, so I'm going to now gonna put that as a power. So that's log base 2 of x squared plus log base 2 of y plus 1 to the 1 half. Remember when I'm adding, that means I'm going to multiply. So log base 2, they are the same base, so I can do this of all this stuff. x squared, and now I'm going to rewrite this as y plus 1, the square root of that, right? I could have put left it as this, the y plus 1 to the 1 half. I could have done that. That's fine, but I'm just going to write the square root because it's good for you all to understand that anything to the 1 half power is a square root. That's maybe a review. Let's do this one. The 2 goes up first. So now I have log base 3 of a b squared to the second minus log base 3 of c to the third plus log base 3. Now this is going to be d to the one third. Okay, so remember our rule is when I'm subtracting, that's dividing. So this is going to be log base 3 of AB squared squared. This is subtracted, so this is being divided, 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 right? And that's to the third power. This is being added. So that means I'm going back. What am I doing? I'm multiplying these whole things. If this was another minus, then it'd go on the bottom, but it's not. It's an addition, so that is my multiplication property. So it goes to the top, so it's D to the one-third. You could have also written that as the cube root of d, correct? And then we have it. You could simplify that out a little bit, maybe a squared b to the fourth, d to the one third. If you like, that would be fine as well. At this point, maybe you're wondering, you said there's gonna be four properties. We've only done three. Well, here's number four. This is called the change of base formula or the change of base property. Now, you'll notice on your calculator right down here, we have log, so that's, um, log base 10, right? That's the common log. Whoa, not 2, 10. And then we have also the natural log button. That's log base E. Okay, those are the two big ones, right? But we have a lot of different logs. Now, some of you don't have these TI-84s all around you, so you need to know how to take logs without them. All right, so this is a handy trick to do that. If I wanted to rewrite this, I could do the following. So I have log base B to the X. Essentially, what I'm going to do is whatever is the new base I want, that's going to be my log. So if I want log base 10, I'm going to rewrite both the top and the bottom, log and log. I'm not going to do base 10, obviously, because we don't write it. It's the common log. And then on the top, I go whatever my, um, oh, I forget what that's called there. That goes there first. In the top, my numerator, my base goes in my denominator. So this would be log base or log base 10 of 12 and log base 10 of 4. And we can divide that out. Now it's easy. I can just do log 12 divided by log 4, and I can do that. And that's in pretty much every scientific calculator. Same works here. I would do the natural log of 12 over the natural log of 4. And for all you're not sure, those two things are going to be the same when you divide it out. Log base 12 divided by log base 4, or excuse me, log of 4. That gives us 1.79. If I did natural log of 12 and divided it by the natural log of 4, it's going to give me the same thing. Boom. All right. Now, here's a little secret. This math button right here is very handy. It has a lot of things in there that are hidden. When you go into the math button, you can go all the way down, but it's easier to go up. If you go up, it'll say log base. When you hit log base, now you can do anything you want in your calculator. So I'm just gonna put four 
and 12 in right away. And notice it's exactly the same thing. So if you have a TI-84 Plus or one of those that has that, great feature. If you don't, though, you have a change of base formula now that you can use any kind of calculator with a common log or a natural log. All right, let's take a look and see what this does actually when we do this, you know, and what happens graphically. So let's expand this one. So we have f of x equals log base 2 of 4x. I have a product, so I'm going to do log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of x. Now, how does that change the graph? Well, we know that this is our function still, and this is just a number, right? Doesn't look like a number, but it's just a number. You can find that number. In fact, this one should be pretty easy. 2 to what power equals 4? Well, that is 2 to the second power. So really, log base 2 of 4, I could rewrite this as, I could rewrite that as just 2 plus log 2 of x. Now it's very easy. What is my shift here? I have a vertical shift, right? I have a vertical shift up two units. So you'll notice that when I have this product property, if I have uh, a coefficient on the inside, it's going to actually shift my graph up, possibly down if there was a negative out here, correct? But it's going to talk, it's going to shift that thing for us. So that is how it looks graphically. Let's take another look at another one. What happens here to this graph? Well, let's expand it. I have a power rule. So I'm going to bring that down. So now that's two times the natural log of x minus 4. So what's going to happen to the graph, right? Well, if I was doing the natural log of x and I compare it to this graph, what happens to it? Well, I'm going 4 to the right, all right? Shift right 4. And I'm multiplying on the outside, so I have a vertical dilation of 2. So this graph is going to expand vertically by 2. That's what's going to happen. So take a minute. I want you to try this one. I'm going to give you a hint. First hint is this. I want you to take a greatest common factor and make two different factors here. So right now you have two terms. I want two factors. So go ahead, try that on your own. All right, so what I did here, I noticed there's a common factor of 9. So now I rewrote this as two factors, 9 times 2 minus x. And then I use my product property, so that's log base 3 of 9 plus log base 3 of 2 minus x. I rewrote this a little bit. Log base 3 of 9 is 2, and I rewrote this as a negative of x minus 2, and then I could see what my shifts were. So this is a vertical shift up to. This negative on the inside is a horizontal reflection, and this x minus 2 is now a shift to the right two units, and, and that's how you can use it. So... These properties are not extremely hard. I understand when they get to be multiple things at one time, like some of these problems, it looks hard. Take it, break it down, all right? Make it a little bit easier for yourself. This should be a quick lesson for you. Nothing but the best. Good luck. Keep going.